Welcome back to the G Fuel E-League Arena. Me, Tasty Steve, and Sage, I'm here on the desk. We're uh, having a good time, enjoying all the games. And it is raucous backstage, by the way. The fighting game community hasn't this changed is true. one bit. Everyone enjoying all the matches so far. Let's just take a look at the last four matches that we've had. Uh, some absolute crackers. Uh, and you can see there, uh, Bad Day continues for Ricky Ortiz. Berlini will make a short work of her. Julio Fuentes was knocked out by Punk. You can see there as well, Momochi got a win over Smug and Infiltration compounded Ricky Ortiz's misery with another win. So that makes the standings look like this. Don't look at the bottom if you're an Evil Geniuses fan. <laughs> yeah, it, ain't, it ain't good reading right now. But you can see Punk and Smug are right up there at the top, three and one, three and two respectively, and everyone else just in the middle hoping for a break and a bit of a sprint into the promised land. Now, the next four games might be able to make that happen. You can see we've got Punk versus Mom. We're going to talk about that. Everyone's grinning on the desk. We're looking forward to that one. Then Brolinio versus Momochi. Infiltration versus Julio Fuentes. And then Mom versus Smug. But before we start talking about the upcoming game, we're going to be getting technical powered by Dell Gaming. And for some reason, we've chosen Tasty Steve to be the one getting technical. I'm really easily excited. <laughs> but um, I want to break down the fact that Street Fighter is about a lot of things. Okay. You have special moves. You have all these utilities that you can take advantage of. And I want to highlight the fact that Punk has been using this all day, using Crouching Fears to use its escape under and evade EX Air Tatsu coming in. Now, that's one of the main tools for Ken to get into the game to start off its offensive pressure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right now. You're going to get technical, Steve? I'm going to get technical. I'm going to attempt right. to get technical. Yeah, I can't wait now, to see this. I love the way you're, you're hunting and pecking. You look like an yeah. old man trying to type over there, <laughs> Steve. Come on. It's modern technology. So what happens is Ken needs this area. He oh, wants yeah. to he wants to get in here, right? Okay. This is where he wants to get in because he's not going to control this ground game. She has way too many tools, way too many tools where she can control all of this. Uh -huh. These are the areas where you can't walk forward. This is getting really scribbly. But the thing is about it that Ken, once he gets enough meter, he's going to want to spend that meter to get in. So we're going to start. I haven't seen this many lines since your last college paper, Steve. This yeah, this is like a pretty rough. All right, we got it. Here go we on. go. So you can see right now, nice approach. And you, like I said before, I'm going to pause it really quick. And that's what I was talking about right, right. there. If it actually pauses. There we go. Now, <laughs> this is really a lot more difficult than it looks. But uh, either way, if you see, I'm going to rewind it a little bit more. Go back to the pin. Say Jam did this flawlessly, you know. Yeah, I mean. I, I said we shouldn't have had Steve do this. I, I apologize. All right, Steve, there you go. Now you're getting technical. The, yeah. Exactly. Now, as you can. God. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Right. Come on, Steve. Either way. There. All right, well, look, uh, we, we get the point you're trying to make. Uh, yes. Stick the draw in the line. You're good at that. You did an excellent uh, job. You did an excellent is... job of pushing the buttons. You, you look like an old fingers, man out there, yeah, right? We'll, we'll, like get, a... we'll get you some special gloves. We'll get you some special gloves. Maybe that'll help next time. <laughs> He's still but it's, it's going to be Sejam that's going to be doing it next time. Yeah. 
He's got those little bitty kid just fingers. Put, put it down before you break. Yeah. You know, all right. This anyway, really expensive. Expensive. Well, we, we, you, can, you can. You want? You want to go in on this? I'll, I'll draft a letter of apology, <laughs> Adele. All right. I'll, I'll handle that. Okay. But let's talk about the game that's coming up. Marn versus Punk. Super excited for this one. Two in your face, alpha guys, entertainers. How do we see this one going? He needs a break. You jump in. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it's going to be an interesting one for sure. I mean, Marn is such a character, right? Yeah. That's, I mean, uh... He is such a character. I mean, I mean, look at him. Come on. I mean, isn't that everything? I've already seen a lot of things on my timeline about his pop-off. It's, if, it's as if Yoda yelling. became a Sith, dude. That's yeah. what that looks like, right? Yoda, man. I don't know what kind of food options they have available. <laughs> it's a like bar, right? So yeah, I was talking tough. to oh, Z, man. and Z felt like his shenanigans would not take him any further than Momochi. He right. was like, Momochi's going to stop this because he's an actual ninja. And I was like, yeah, good luck with that. And he still got exposed when... Yeah, didn't you want to tell Richard that you were right about I that? I told you I was right, Yeah, man. okay, you get to do it now. Yeah, you did it right. backstage I wasn't, twice, I, I, of course. Look, I want you to know how right I was, and I'm going to make sure you know the entire time we shoot this show. But Well, well, well all right then, so now he's got to go up against Punk, right? There's surely no way oh, Mom yeah. can keep rolling. Well, I think that's a up for debate right now. I mean, we talked about Marn getting warmed up, but Punk has been had has the best record so far, and he has basically been unstoppable in a lot of these matchups. Like I said, utilizing a lot of the tools that, in some instances, I haven't even seen utilized by other Karens either. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, stage stage an intervention here and uh, give me a prediction. I Mom's mean, not gonna do it, is he? I like Punk. I think that Punk is playing <laughs> really? really well today. Oh, you looked at me so. Oh. What the are you, just, are, you, are, are you doubting Marn? Are you doubting the gold that he's given us already? I feel like instead right, you well, are doubting the alpha. Keep, <laughs> keep that energy. Maybe not so much the technical skills, but that energy because the game is about to start. Marn versus Punk. Take it away, gentlemen. All right. So let's get into it here. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be a scrappy one for sure. I think there's no way this doesn't turn into a bit of craziness. And, you know, surprisingly, uh, Punk is going to be the one who wants to slow this down, right? I mean, that's really the way he's got to play this. And I think the main thing that he has to do is navigate past the V skill from e such an important tool, right? It has huge range on it. It's got that pullback as well. So Punk's usual whip punishing is going to be pretty tough to do against a character like that. Okay, well, he got one there. That's a, that's that's 100% true. And I feel like one of uh, Punk's major strengths is the fact that he can control that neutral. And we even seen him do it against Momochi. And just the fact that she does have that V skill, Ibuki does have that V skill to keep Karen honest in a, in a bunch of situations, unless she gets a mix-up option, maybe in an air-to-air -air switch. But here's the V trigger for Morn. Oh, juggling the ball and the cross up. That was so that sick. That was dirty. Yeah, he had, he had it fully prepared, but Marn, one dagger left, throws it. I like the patience right now. Uh oh, here this we go. is so scary. Oh, the throw bait, it didn't work out, and no anti air from Punk. It's gotta be so careful. Full critical are on deck. Marn with zero daggers left to his name. Oh, the anti-air jab doesn't work out. You hear that little, that little yeah. clap for himself? <laughs> He's feeling good, especially considering the fact that, once again, man, we have all these doubters like Sejim mm -hmm. saying that he can't stop the Alpha. What if he's the Omega? You ever think about that? You, did you, the Alpha I, versus the Omega? I'm just right saying, now? man, you have, to, you have to put these things into perspective when you watch these kinds of matches. Steve, I'm just letting you know right now. That's not how the alphabet works. I know you barely understand our alphabet, so you start getting into a more complex one. We're going to see. We're going to see right now. Nice. Finds that crouching medium punch. And you see this offense. And you see Pump getting a little more ambitious, walking to that corner, and not letting Morin get any of his movement. Man, you see that V skill from Ibuki. As I mentioned, I feel like that's going to be one of the biggest issues in this matchup. That's the one thing that if Pump can't make it past, uh, yeah, it's going to look rough. Does he nice. go for damage here? No, he wants to mix up. Jump short. What side? What side? Oh, nice what block, block right there. That was so important from Punk. Oh, that standing light kick whiff still activates trigger. Oh, it stuffed wow. it? It stuffed it? He does have CA. We'll see if he spends it. He does. So he could be light on the life bar, right? She can't take those big hits. But there's a ton of scaling on there. Still going to be enough. Nah, she's, uh, she's tissue paper, bro. Tissue paper? She's tissue paper, man. Well, uh, you have to think as well that, you know, Marn, Final he's been round. in the U.S. playing for a while. And none other than Echo Fox Justin Wong's house. Playing yeah, against true. Karen 24-7 every single day of his life. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if that comes into play here. What side? Cross up, and it was an easy block. block. I like the fact that 
Warren uses her dash so much. Canceling a lot of times off of Crouching Strong just to see if they're awake. Oh. You have to hit a button to test here. Throw we go. bait in the front and the stun. One more hit. Gotta be so careful. Oh. And he baited the throw. <gasps> oh, I had to let him know. Steve. Somebody check the rule books. Somebody check the rule books because that was definitely a T-Bag. Esports. What just happened, Steve? I don't know about all that. That's I mean, not what people came to win. see, mister. It's not what people came to see. I mean, you know, that camera that they have. Oh, it, oh, he's, <laughs> oh, he's showing them the D-pad. He's like, this is how you, this is how you teabag properly. He's teaching them how to get technical, Steve. Is that what it is he's doing? A much better With job than you. That is for sure. <laughs> Man, what a round from Punk. And yeah, he just had to let him know. He had to let him know. He had to cool his jets. And I feel like against a player like Marn, that is going to make him play 100 times faster. You know how Marn is. He's just going to be like, oh, man, I'm going to wake up buttons here. I'm just going to do whatever I want, and I'm going to run you over. Yeah, nice tech on the throw right oh, there. Caught man. him peeking. Hits him with the EX. Nice DP to get out. And the sun Still let him have it. Oh, man. Huh? The big neutral jump left, right. Goes behind this time in the block from Marn. Okay, this time blocks. Gets the throw. Warren does have trigger available. Nice air to air right there. Yeah, with that new target combo uh, that Karen has this season. One hit for Mar. Oh, the dash through. All right, this is this is the left, right. Now this is an opportunity. In the front, behind. Nice. The I can't believe how good his blocking is right now. The children. You didn't believe, Steve. I did, man. I believed in that review reversal, and now sitting in an excellent position. Punk below the wall of medium kicks. All the medium kicks in the world. Round two. Fight. Match point, Punk. Did Tasty oh. Steve know? I did not know. I'm 100% uh, in the dark right now. And I see right now that Punk is doing such a great job of controlling this neutral. Punk's not able to get anything started. And already in the corner at the beginning of this second round, second match. And that jump back Tarkon will open him up. This should be stun. It is, and he's got some... Oh, oh man, the he slow some more. Oh, my God. It? He had to slow it down so that the replay operators don't have to. Double short, EX, Tanko. It doesn't get much cleaner than that. Ouch. That was... The Alpha over the Omega, and despite the mean mugging... Oh, did you see the look yeah. from Mar? <laughs> yeah. Did you see the look from He's Mark? He's asking him what happened. You thought you was going to beat me? Bag of rice? You thought you was going to stop me? Look, you didn't get cooked by a secondary, so it's not the end of the world. But man, that, that was pretty good. <laughs> wow. That, that's true. It could have been a lot worse. Could have got cooked by that secondary. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, and I got to tell you, backstage, Punk is probably the funniest person in the entire room. He just sits there and he just talks trash about everybody so like open-heartedly that it's just amazing. And every time, no matter what event he's at, no matter how many people he's there, and no matter how many people he beats, he uh -huh. always talks trash. It's always the same kind of stuff, too. It's like, why he mad? Like, he just, like, starts talking all this mess. Oh, juggling the bomb right there? That was so sick. That is such a Marn thing to come up with, too. It was very smart. He has pulled out some of the craziest mix-ups that we've seen all day. Yeah, and I feel like the, the cool thing about Marn is that all the stuff that he's gone for has been, like, Marn specific Like, no other Ibuki is doing the kind of stuff that he's doing. And it was the same way when he played Mika, right? Yes. Like, everything he was doing was just so Marn specific Like, nobody else is doing those setups. Nobody else is doing those mix-ups. Nice standing. Spears right there, same side. And, like I said, the pressure for Punk is Oh, so man, and good. it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, the drop bag I want you to see it again. And that EX uppercut that holds it out. And you know Punk is feeling good about You know he is. Oh, He's back man. there watching it right now, talking more smack. Oh, the man. slow, the super slow-mo T-Bag. Oh, man. It doesn't get better Thanks than that. Thanks to the crew. Oh, Another shot God. of the T-Bag. Oh, my God. You know, you thought you thought you were going to lose it. <laughs> you thought you were going to lose it in the eSports world. But no, it's still around. You got to know about the... <laughs> Such a good air to air. Yeah, that jump back strong fierce. It's a brand new this season, actually. It's something that you got to watch out for, right? That new target combo that you see like no Karen players That's are true. using. Uh, but he's actually been using quite a bit. And that that tea bag, you know, you can put a, you can inject a lot of, of quality, uh, you know, production quality into something, but you can never take away that down, down. No, down, that's down. that's raw right there. That is no graphical. No, they didn't touch that at all. You that can't is blur raw. it out. Like, like, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. It's just gonna happen whether you like it or not. So, you know, protect your children's eyes. Avert them from the screen when you see these young bucks on there, because uh, they they just have no respect. Rambunctious kids, man. Rambunctious <laughs> kids. Man, what a match that was. I was so excited for it. It was such a good one. But, you know, it doesn't get any doesn't get any slower throughout the day. As we wind down, we're getting into some of the, the yes. super deep matches where they really count here about who will move on, who will get, make it out of this group into that top six. So up next, as you can see on your screen, there, we're going to have Brolinio oh, wow. versus Momochi. It's going to be an excellent match. Stick around, and we'll see you guys in just a bit.
Welcome back to E-League, everybody. I hope you're having as good of a time as we are. Tasty, see, I see that big old smile over there. I see that you're hanging out, relaxing, all right? <laughs> good times all around. Great yeah. matches all around. Uh -huh. I mean, what more could you ask for? Yeah. I mean... You missed it in the break. Steve was over there on his typewriter. You know, he was building a smoke signal to Pulled tell somebody... Pulled out an ink ribbon, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. The technological barriers were breaking down here at E-League. It's, uh, it's next level. <laughs> right, Steve? The Look, matches. man, just because you can't see an R-rated movie, don't don't sit here and get mad at me because I can't use a tablet, all right? Just... Look, all right, you guys missed the crane they used to lift Steve up onto the stage here. It's like three feet off the ground. It's too big of a jump for him to make, so... <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, you know, he just can't make it up here on his own. These things happen, <laughs> but our next match is going to be a really good one. Uh, you know, they, they've been great all day. Brolinho versus Momochi. Brolinho has been doing a lot of damage all day. Um, yeah. And in a tournament like this, in a setting like this, the more matches that are played, the more dangerous he looks. Oh, yeah. Um, easy to see why he's here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, he's 2-1. and one. He has a winning record so far, and we saw Momochi. He was uh, one and two before the last set, so in a little bit of a pickle, right? That's a bad spot. You really got to try to keep your game differential uh, high because right now the middle of the pack, yes. it's terrifying. And it might come down to that last set. Like an infiltration versus Momochi, you know, that's one of the, the second to last match yes. of the day, for instance. Those two guys might have to beat each other to win. It might be like, all right, infiltration, if you win, you make it. Momochi, if you win, you make it. Two out of three, go. Oh and we're just God. like, all right, that match is going to determine whether you move on or not in the bracket. So it, it's a really terrifying situation to be uh, unless you're guys like punk or smug who have a little bit yeah, of a separation a nice little, they got a nice little gap in between them where they can they can you know kind of right. relax but you don't want to because we saw no. what happened to south by southwest yes. you did really good in pool play and then when it came to actually playing in the tournament bopped yeah. so it's definitely something you want to pay attention to but not to be outdone momochi has been making some crazy strides as well yeah. he's been picking up in speed when it comes to momentum as well as some of the adjustments he's made from round to round yes. to take matches back i've nothing short of amazing yeah that match versus smug man that was so good oh man i could see I my reaction my food. i was in the back and i dropped my food on the floor i'm not even joking i dropped chicken all over whoever got to clean it up i apologize yeah. but that's exactly what happened <laughs> Dang, now we know somebody back there is cleaning up spare chicken. Like, man, this guy, Steve, dropping everything everywhere. Right. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a good one. Berlino versus Mochi. Mochi does choose to stay with Kent. I mean, you know, we saw him try out all those characters over at South by Southwest. And he said it was kind of like before E-League, like as a tester. I wonder if he just didn't want people to get the download on this can I wonder if that was the strategy so I spoke to Z about it a little bit and he says Momochi definitely wants to have a, a pocket character or two for e -League. how sure he is in those characters we don't know yet right but I feel like it's definitely good to have something in the backup I mean we saw what happened for Brolinho when he was playing infiltration he had to pull out that abuki because infiltration was looking pretty dominant but either way there's a stun Done. right away big jump in combo afterwards too and all the way to the corner what a good spot for Momochi and now geez, you see that setup he just right he did right there double jab it covered both quick rise and back roll. Calm one to stand line kick. EX Tatsu Momochi looking pretty clean. Like I said before, though, do not do not count Bolino out. He's been turning matches around all day. I want to see what adjustments he makes this round to try to steal it back from Momochi. Nice crush counter roundhouse. Drops the combo, unfortunately. Just gets that little jab. Look at the medium kick checks, and he builds up a ton of great damage. That's one of the big things that you got to be careful about, Nikali. So many heavy and medium normals that he can stack uh, on top of each other. Neutral jump and the big damage output on it because of all that gray. Missed jump over Momochi. Ooh, that could have been dangerous. Punish, and yeah, you see the walk forward. Momochi was ready for it. And you see the patience for yeah. Momochi too. This guy is just hanging out, really nice and slow. The, the interceptive style. Rush counter gets the roundhouse, pops trigger. Oh, they trade. It's that wake up Tatsu from Momochi. Three frames, very fast. Momochi, definitely down on life. Let's have trigger and a lot of resources. He's about two hits from closing this out. Oh, wow, that, that could have been potentially dangerous. See that fireball? If that had hit, he would have activated. And there's the down strong. Brolinho, this trigger's not going to run out, so he's going to keep this. It's about 35 seconds left on the clock right now. You see Momochi just trying to get that life lead back. Critical Art is available. And oh, what a block. He's got to be so careful. He's in trigger. Oh, oh the my God. From Momochi. That was so sick. He was just in the right spot. And it's going to be enough. It was counter hit, so bigger damage on it. And first game, Momochi. The footsies. The I did not her. think that was going to kill. Yeah, I did not <laughs> either, dude. I was definitely not about to say it. I was definitely I not that's about why I looked at you. I was like, is he going to say it's going to kill? Because I don't know. Definitely said, dude, I'm, I don't know. Uh-oh, Brolinho. Video the games are man. confusing, Steve. 
Much like this technology, man. This is crazy, man. I feel older by the second. Don't look at me like that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that I know how. All right. You know? Nice anti-air jab. Nice to get out of that. And we saw Brolinho doing a great job of keeping people honest, making sure they're aware of that command throw. And Momochi's not taking any of it. Nice target to get through. Finds the hit. Yeah, back-to-back -back medium kicks. And moving forward out of the range of that size mode. And that's one thing you have to do against Nikali is change up your spacing, right? So as you kind of move around, you throw off the range that he wants to do the size moves at. It's a really important part about fighting against the character. Jump over. Doesn't get a combo, but out of the corner. Oh, nice. Crouch short to try to fake him out. Mochi oh. gets the throw and baits out the EXDP. Nice chunk of damage. He's going to get an option right now. Oh, the meaty, and that'll be stunned. Should be the round. Mochi going to double uppercut, build a little bit of bar, and then close that out. Mochi now on match point. Speaking of bars. Okay. Round two. I definitely don't have bars. <laughs> Sorry. I was talking about the action. Uh, you know, I just, I mean, like, in general, rhyming, it's difficult. Oh, my God, the big damage I'll put on that. Look at the stun bar right now. Oh, my God. So quick. Momochi going to get big damage, and he just needs one hit to close it out. Trigger activated. Yeah, Roger. Oh, the interception. That was so sick. He interrupted him on the movement, and Momochi closes it. Oh, that was so sick. Ouch. Man. I like the checks on the jab. We've been seeing that a lot um, today, uh, mostly from Punk, uh, yeah. making sure you can't dash in. We saw Momochi do the exact same thing just there, and that's one of the things you have to keep track of in, in Street Fighter V. You yes. need to make sure that they respect the fact that they can't just dash up and keep that pressure going. Sometimes oh, yeah. you got to check them with a crouching jab or maybe a standing strong. Who knows? Yeah, the dashes are so fast, right? You have to be super prepared to intercept something like that. It's And that's kind of Momochi's game. Play, right? Like, that's what he's so good about. So, he had a really excellent confirm there. I feel like that reminded me of the Ricky match, too, where... He, yes, like, that's true. He played so perfect in both of those games. Uh, he was just totally ready for everything. And I like all the tests that Momochi... Every time, he made sure that Brenlino understood that he's not going to just hit buttons next to him and not get challenged. Try the wake-up buttons. Finishes with that EX Tatsu. And Momochi is just... Man, he's just picking up steam. The further we get in this pool, hey... Yeah, and I mean, these clutch moments right here where Momochi, you know, his opponent... Oh, that cool. could Crouch burn. strong and the critical. And it was a counter hit. It's so beautiful. How does he walk all the way up in your face and just check with that crouching meat? Like, you got to be so brave. And you see Berlino, he kind of leaned down. I don't even think he expected it to be enough to kill. But man, what a, a set this was for Momochi. Such, such Dash textbook play. Oh. to get the crush counter. Throw. Stun. stun. Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? The calculation to know that that was going to be a stun, really, really smart for Momochi. And he just needs one hit here to close it out, which, you know, he's just so prepared. Look at him. Boom. Perfect. Tried the dash. And the thing is about it, which which makes that so good, is the fact that Nikali's dash gets faster when he's in V-Trigger. He's super fast. So for you to say, you know what, I'm going to press a button when he dashes up, not knowing exactly what's about to happen, that says a lot about a player and a character. Just yeah. saying. And it goes, like, half screen. <laughs> so, like, you're just sitting there, like, half screen, like, all right, well, he could or could not. That, oh, my God, he's right there. But most people, they would get clipped, Momochi. It's the ninja eye. Yeah. And on top of that, Momochi was backdashing a lot just to make sure that he understood that. Yeah, he was in that perfect range at all times. He's like, I'm going to back up right here. Boom, perfect spacing at all times. And I mean, you know, this group is not going to get any easier as we go on here. The next match, you see him on a screen there wiping away the uh, something out of his eyes. Oh, dude, what's up, camera guy? Uh, versus Julio Fuentes versus Infiltration, the Darth. Korean Sith Lord himself, you see him there. It's gonna be a good one. We'll see you guys in a bit.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. More E-League Street Fighter V action. I am Tasty Steve, joined by none other than Sejam. Our next match, I hope you guys are ready. This is going to be crazy. Infiltration versus Julio. This is going to be good. Yeah, I mean, both these guys are battling for positioning near the bottom section of that group. I think Infiltration has really brought it back from the start of the day where he was looking a little shaky. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that look on his face says it all. He's uh, he's hanging out up there <laughs> playing some jury. You can see his record is 2-2, two and two, so he can kind of cross into that other half if he gets a win here, right? I think uh, Smug and Punk were around those three wins yes. for a while, though, although Punk just got that other W. Infiltration... Looking not as, as Darth Lordish as nah, he was nah. before, looking much more relaxed, you know? I, I, I used to dress like this back in my day. You still dress like this, being a child. And, of course, Julio, all he needs is one more is to mm. bridge that gap. I feel like he'll be safe if he wins this next match. So, of yeah. course, this is going to be a very serious situation for him. But this is going to be a tough one because we don't know who Infiltration is going to go with. On right. top of that, like I said... Julio has been getting better and better as the, the day goes on. Uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of the ring rust that he has has really just worn off as yes, he's played, right? I like he said that to him in the restaurant. I was like, yo, dude, you're looking pretty crisp right now. He's like, I know, bro. Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> and it was crazy. He just breaks it down, right? He has such interesting philosophies about fighting games in general. He's an interesting guy to talk to. But it looks like it's going to be Rashid from Infiltration. Mm. Interesting pick for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm uh, curious to see how this goes. Like, he's been playing a lot of Jury all day, and to me, that character, that has looked like his best character. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, we don't really get to see as many Juries these days. I mean, but just the fact that Infiltration is sticking true, but now he's playing Rashid, let's see what happens. Yeah, for sure, this is gonna be an interesting one, and it's, a, it's an important spot in the group, right? You wanna avoid that bottom two. Those are the two players that will be not be making it on into the next section of this group stage. So really, you, you gotta try to stay alive. Nice pressure right here. Oh, wow, nice throw, back dash there by Infiltration. Nice button to check. You want to get that Tatsu back to the middle of the screen. Wake up, EX spinning. Yeah, first knockdown scenario, Infiltration with the immediate EX. And, you know, Infiltration, oh, wow, what an escape, too. He's really not about oh, that juggle. Oh, my. Yeah, he is really throwing Julio off. And I think Julio had some trouble with this character in Season 1. You know, he had those losses to Ramasama throughout the year. He lost to him at, like, SCR and other stuff. And I think that oh, wow. this just shows... Uh, for that throw OS option right there. Doesn't work out. This is such a scary spot for Julio. Mm -hmm. Okay, has corner now in the fireball game. Nice jab. Needs to be really careful. I would not expect him to do it at that range. I know he's probably looking more for that uh, that EX uh, DP just so he can mess with it, but didn't take it. Instead, goes for that crouching fierce. Yeah, exactly. And, and this this spacing game has worked out so well for infiltration. And you can see, I feel like the speed he's playing at, Julio's just not ready for it. Yeah, I don't feel like a lot of people are ready for this kind of movement, especially. Uh, I feel like we don't see as many Rashid. So just, I mean, even with his recent buffs in Season 2. Right. I mean, he's such a strong character this season. His ground game is immaculate. The movement's really good. I think it's everything that Infiltration excels at. And he can really avoid a lot of oh, defensive did. scenarios. And Infiltration's not a guy that sits there and blocks a lot. He's, he's more about moving around and avoiding that altogether. Nice V skill right there to get out of that jump in from Rashid. And now you see Julio trying to slow down that pace. That movement from Infiltration has gotten a little less. But there you go. There's the V reversal. Oh, it still gets clipped. Activation. Yeah, that's just going to make the sweep safe. And you see, he uses that to push to the corner. Nice. Can't do anything after that. You got to be careful. Oh, big combo chance now. Heavy mixer at the end there. Just throws on the Beyblade. And one hit. Got to be so careful. Oh, nice air to air with that jump roundhouse. It still gets clipped, and there's a throw. And you really have to be careful. You get hit with that mixer, and a lot of people freeze up because sometimes they're not aware if it's going to knock down or not. Right. And he gets that one free guess, and the chances are it's a throw. Infiltration takes first game. Yeah, you gotta be so so careful, right? Because after that mixer, he can extend it and knock you down, or he can just choose not to. So it's like, uh, does he extend it? Does he not extend it? Oh god, now I gotta guess. Yeah. And it happens so fast. Ooh, tries to roll under that again. Yeah, Julio finding his rhythm here. Those little couple of fireballs add up pretty quick. Julio. I, I like the footsies right now. No jumping, just taking a step back, throwing another fireball to check. There's that crush counter. Oh, jump. It landed in the front. It's because Julio back, uh, back rolled. He wasn't expecting it to be there. Back dash. That was a good back dash. That's going to hit. Oh, nice side switch right there to get that corner pressure. Yeah, I love that he did that. It's, it's so important. And I feel like positioning, if you have a stop, man, that's a big risk to take, oh. but it works. Got him. 
Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. That was Julio so looking like the Julio of old. Remember? That this was such like a. Uh, I don't, I'm trying to think like a March mix up for Julio, yeah. right? Like he definitely was doing that like last March or last April. That was like the Julio standard, <laughs> and like it just worked in the year 2017. It just it doesn't matter. And now you see the respect game coming out. Julio taking that first round, second game, and you see the pace go slightly to a crawl. Ooh, tries to punish that, but just a little too early. Yeah, this is Rashid pick. Oh, throw bait. Yeah, and you don't want to tech there because if he does another roundhouse, it puts him in the air and you can't throw it. Oh, wow. Julio taking that out of Crouch Strong and trying to get an offense. Nice hit. EX Tatsu confirmed. Nice jump in right there. Big damage output on this. One more for stun, but the wake up button misses the EX Eagle. And now Julio, he's not out of this yet. Oh, what a. Oh, God, what a DP. Juggle. This is the last guess. Does infiltration do it? Oh, the sweep, but no punish. One hit. Julio just needs one hit and infiltration. EX. Julio's got to survive all this pressure. He's doing a good job so far, oh, but the jump in. Doesn't confirm it. Now Julio, he's got to guess. Oh, punish. Where oh was the punish God. and infiltration steals it? We legit, oh man, I was just wow. talking to Julio and he was like, man, like certain things I forget. Oh, and, he, yeah. and, and I feel like that was one of those instances. It's been a while, you know, it's he hasn't been playing. Oh, there's the clean uppercut. Those are, those are the things you always remember. Chase down oh. the roundhouse. Great round so far for Julio. And he's got this great corner positioning for himself. You have to be so scared if you're infiltration about trying to move out. Julio's done a good job of intercepting, no uppercut. And I would like to see. I feel like Julio's neglecting that round. That range that Rashid is playing at, you can make him kind of respect it. You still got to be careful, but right. now he's out of that range. No punish again. Yeah, he just doesn't know it. He, he's trying to figure it out. You can see he's trying a few options. And that's when you can get that delayed uh, fierce DP if you block it. All you have to do is to delay it a quick second, but Julio just not, not reacting. Not yeah, reacting at all. This is a tough match for Ken for sure, but oh, what a punish. Yeah, see, when Julio goes for the sweep, infiltration is still prepared. Oh, the reversal does work out. He's spending a lot of his resources, you know, both at V gauge and the X bar. Take that corner push and then the V reversal. That was a good V reversal. That was a good V reversal. No trigger for Julio. He really hasn't gotten to use it this set. And you can see infiltration. The hit and run is such a big problem. Julio needs to make something happen right now. Finds the hit. He got him. Oh, I, th I thought the exact same thing. He thought he was going to do a wake up EX spinner. 14 seconds left on the clock. Oh my God, he just makes the EX DP. Uh, Tatsu. So oh, time. It got stuffed. He's got to run. Five seconds left on the clock. He's got to run. He's trying to run out of there, Julio with the chase down. Oh, the oh sweep, it God. was an overcommitment and infiltration with the punish. And, man, Julio definitely just lost to not punishing sweeps. Yeah. Three unpunished sweeps in that set, and I know that's not gonna, that's not gonna feel good. You can't walk back to the, to the room and just hold, you gotta hold it now. Yeah, he tried a few things to punish it and none of it worked, right? Uh, I feel like he never went to just standing roundhouse. No. Uh, I feel like that would have been a, a good option. It's definitely one of those things you look at because, like I said, he was playing at that range. You saw infiltration, like, yo, I want you to do something right here. That would have forced infiltration to jump, and that would have opened the game up because we saw how on point he was with those anti-air right. DPs. And he had great convert. He didn't drop a DP combo, but he dropped that sweet punish. Yeah, that, I, I think it's the little things. Like, as you watch Julio play, it's like he's piecing little things together as <laughs> he plays. He's like, memory. Yeah, it's like he, he's had, like had, momentum. he had amnesia <laughs> for, like, six months, and he comes back, and he's like, oh, I remember how to uppercut. Oh, I remember how to do this. It's like he's piecing everything together as he goes, but like just not everything is there. You know what I mean? Like he's just slowly trying to to figure that all out. Okay. Well, I like I like I said, we're a hundred percent impressed still by Julio. Mm -hmm. But next up, I believe we have a segment coming. Oh, it's my favorite segment, Steve. It's by the boys that I know and love, and everybody at home, I'm, of course, they're listening to the audio, and it's fantastic in the ears because they're using one of these awesome headsets, the HyperX X-Factor. HyperX. So let's uh, head over and check it out. That's absolutely right. It is time for the X-Factor brought to you by HyperX. I'm Richard Lewis up here with Rip. I've got a feeling that I know what you're going to pick. I mean, a crazy game there between uh, Julio Fuentes and Infiltration, and there was one moment that really stood out. Talk us through it. Right. I mean, basically, it was just the end of the match. You know, Julio had a chance at that final in the second last round, but as we can see here, you know, things got down to the wire. Last 20 seconds ago, Julio, you know, he's almost got this life. He's trying to chip it down. And Infiltration, you know, he's just trying to survive here and just hold on and close it out. 
and you can see he's got the size of a lifeline here. 10 seconds on the clock, he decides he needs to start running away. Julio needs to try to close it down, but instead, you know, Infiltration gets away and then sweeps him on the incoming right here. Boom for the punish, and that's going to do it. Infiltration takes it over Julio Fuentes. Yeah, crazy, crazy round. So close, you can see it here just in slow motion as well. Yeah, you can see Julio, you know, chopping down the lead. You know, time was becoming a factor here. Julio dashing in, trying to get that throw bait. Doesn't work out. Infiltration takes a little bit more chip there. Recognize that time is becoming a factor. It starts to back away. You've seen that play stuff from all day. Punches that on the landing frame there. And it takes a little bit more time. And before you knew it, he was out of there. Yeah, well, another crazy game here for the first day of the E-League Street Fighter V Invitational. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to have another amazing game, which is taking on a whole new significance. It's going to be Smug versus Marn. Make sure you join us. Everybody, welcome back to E-League. Oh, the matches are just getting good, Steve. Smug, as you can see on your screen there. Uh-oh. When he's making eye contact with the camera, you know it's about to be uh, the welcome party to Duff City. <laughs> the road signs are all pointing to Duff City. Uh-huh. He's about to send Marn on a bus back there. Oh! oh yo, no. The counter mug? The counter mug to Smug? I like it. I like it. Oh, the, oh, next the slice. Naked. The nerd Josh? Is that the year <laughs> the of the nerd Josh? The year of the next slice has begun. It's the FGC year. Well, uh, this is an important one in terms of results. So Marn right now is at two and two, and Smug is at three and two. He is tied with two other people. So in second place right now is Smug, Infiltration, and Momochi. All three of them are at three and two. And as a reminder, the top two will move on automatically. Uh, into this bracket. Bottom two will get dropped. So it's really important yeah. to fight for that positioning right now. It's really important to fight for that. And man, 
Oh, this is going to be is so the, good. This is Pool A first day that we are getting yep. these kinds of matches. And I can't be any more excited right now because, I mean, we're going to get... Uh, I feel like the oh, pop off. I feel, yeah, dude. No matter what happens, the looks on both of their faces, win or lose, are gonna be legendary, right? Like, I you feel know? like Smug is gonna win. He's gonna hit him with the birdie taunt. He's gonna flick a booger at him, and like <laughs> Martin's gonna faint. And I'm like, oh, that's gross, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's a little bit esports here. Smug doesn't have to pick his own boogers. They actually have somebody on site to do it for him, you know. But uh, you know, some things don't change. So if you see a hand up that nostril, you know what's going on. All right. It's gonna be an interesting match. A very explosive one. Uh, you know, a lot about V triggers and a lot about just of damage output. We got a stat from the back room. Smug is, has a 100% wind round rate when he lands crouching medium kick target combo. Oh, wow. So when he lands that crouching medium kick target combo in a V-trigger, he has 100% won oh every God. round. Nice charge punch right there. It's now pressure for Ibuki. And the walk up, you gotta be so worried if you're Marn about every one of these pressure strings. She just, what did you call her earlier? Tin paper, or uh, paper or something She's like that? Paper mache? Paper. Yeah, it's tissue paper. Nice. Extension here, we'll get the left Makes right. Up. Ooh, wow. Uh, we have not seen any Ibuki player use the toggle, like, Round like two. make sure that you're on your toes by what? hitting the bomb. It's so smart. Like, uh, man, I can't believe it. He is just so genius about it, right? Uh, he has his own setup that I feel like nobody else is doing. Nobody it. else is doing those setups. Mug was just not ready for it. Checks with a couple. Oh, how Look many at the now? great. Oh. And one more for stun on the round. There Ouch. it is. Marn with the wake up buttons and the duffs. Spend the second bar. Not quite enough to close it out. But man, look at the laying into him with the medium kicks. One more will close out the round. Really smart not to hit a button right there, but more not V reversing. Choosing to rely on getting a hit just so he can cancel into that V trigger. Didn't work out. Round three, first game. Let's see how this goes. The walk under and got to be careful if you're smug about, you know, those those situations. If you put yourself in cross up ranges, Ibuki, it's tough for him to answer here. He nice still works. skill to push away. While that jump in could have been massive. Yeah, and Marn is totally content with slugging, which I think is such a dangerous thing against a character like Balrog. Especially, Left, right? Yeah. Oh, in the front, and now we're just about tied up. Both of them with trigger available. Oh, the activation. All right. He's going to get big damage output on this. One more set of EX, and he's got one guess. Oh my god. Nice defense right now. He's still oh, not using a V reversal. And I mean, I guess Smug is going to. Oh, oh, did you see the way he looked around? Ooh. Ooh. If that was his stream, you know he would toggle to the he full screen. He would toggle to the full screen. screen. And Marn. And Marn looked like he just ate some bad pasta right now. He needs to be careful, man. Yeah, that is, uh, that's a rough look on his face for sure. I don't, I don't know if that's what he was hoping for after that first, that first match. That pasta, huh? I think they're giving him too much credit with how healthy <laughs> pasta can be, but you know. Oh, oh the nice overhead. block on the overhead. Goes into the target, gets Ryder. Dash up, medium kick. I, I like this. Warren trying to take a little bit more control. I don't think he should slug it out, but I do think he should move into better positioning to make sure he can, you know, react to dash punches and maybe get out of range. Oh, he went for the uh, meaty slide after that. You get the, the jump into the meaty slide, but it's a little too far. Dash through is interrupted, and Marn in great positioning this round. Oh, the activation, smug, big duffs. Oh, nice. Tries to go for the reset. Caught her low, and she is dead. Just like that, you get clipped for one second. You don't watch your toes, and that'll do it. Still it is not looking good right now. Hanging on to that 100% win rate after hitting the tar combo. <laughs> I mean, can you blame him? Oh, nice. Dash punch. Wow. What side? Oh, same side. Yeah, and the block and the smoke. I think Marn is playing this round a little bit better so far. Like I said, he's moving a lot more, getting into a position where he can react a little more. Those neutral jumps are coming in handy, except for in that situation, because you might be losing now. Yeah, you feel like you can neutral jump against Barog. Like one upper, and suddenly you've lost so much of your life. The whip punish. And it's not too bad if he doesn't have leader, but... All right, nice tech. Oh, now he's going to get a chance right now. This can right. definitely turn around. Here it is. Do, does he guess right? He stayed in the front. The bomb. <gasps> Double mix up. Dirt bag. Greedy. What a dirt bag. This Man. Marn guy. I can't believe he reset. I thought he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the damage right here. I'll go for double right. No, why not just go for some reset? Nice. Crouch is strong in the EX Kuna. Oh, wow. Yeah, overhead gets clipped by that jump back OS tech. And this is such a scary spot for Marn. All that meter for Smug has him in the corner. And Marn, you know, he blocked the X dash punch, which he knows is plus, but he's like, yeah, I should have button. Mm -hmm. Normal Marn things. Overhead. overhead. 
needs to be really careful. Critical Art is locked and loaded right now, and oh. you might be dead, sir. Duff. <laughs> City. <laughs> Duff. Does it get any more Duff-tastic than Smug <laughs> looking around to confirm that other people saw the beating that just went on? Man, that was rough. That was rough. Marn. Uh, couldn't find a moment to block, and you s <laughs> the reluctant handshake. Oh, oh, the uh, uh, mix-up? Uh, uh, oh, 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 no, Warren, no, what the fuck? You know, he, he probably saw him backstage putting that, that right hand right up his nostril to dig for some gold, so maybe that's what it was. <laughs> you know, maybe he just knew that their boogers had been not only picked, but consumed, he so looked, he wasn't interested in the handshake. He's like, I got the W, it doesn't even matter. Victory boogers on me. Marn with the walk off stage. He's got to think about it. I think probably a smart decision to avoid the boogery handshake. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And Smug moves on to four and two in the group. That puts him ahead of Infiltration of Momochi, yeah. who were both three and two in the, in the group and haven't as played well each Punk, other. Right? Uh, no, Punk is in first place mm -hmm. right now. So, yeah, all three of them were tied for second place, uh, Smug, Info, and Momo. So it's going to be an interesting position now for sure. You can see some replays from the match. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of it. Look at this mix-up. This, this so mix-up was ridiculous. Cheeky, right? What side, man? Oh, kicks the bomb with that standing light kick and then immediately double dash through. Man, on another what game. <laughs> the damage output is absurd. It's just so crazy, right? And he uses the last bit of this V-Trigger to get a little bit of that extension. The Fierce. And you know Marn was not feeling good about that Fierce. And that's what you said. He's like, I don't really think it's wise to try to slug it out with Balrog. That's why you don't try it. And this is also why you don't try it. Yeah, so scary. Oh, this, this is, is the confirmation. So check it out. He can walk under or stay in the front. He stays in the front, gets this mix-up, double mix-up, and that will close out the round. Really, really impressive for Marn, for sure. Game two, round three. And now you see this corner position in his favor, gets the overhead. And just this pressure in the corner was so relentless, and that EX to close it out. And seconds later, the lack of the handshake to just, you just gotta tell him how he feels, right? Exactly. He just gotta let him know. <laughs> we can't always speak our minds, but yeah. we can show it with, you know, a handshake or maybe a lack thereof. And like he stuck it out and then he dropped it and then he reapplied. Like it was like he was like halfway between like, do I respect you as a human being? Or does do my does my face hurt too much from the gloves? Just the leather applied to the face, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, <laughs> I think that the the fact that they still have the attitude enough to sh like shaft each other on the no handshakes and still play games, I think that's really cool. I, yeah. I respect that. Because, you know, backstage right now, Smug is giving him the look still. He is walking backwards, still giving him that look. And, uh, you know, the matches, they're just going to get better and better throughout the day. We're getting close to narrowing down who is going to make it and who will go home today in Group A. Stick around. We got Brolino versus Punk coming up next.
Welcome back. And uh, you can see we've switched it up once again. We've got Technical Steve and Z uh, all having lots of fun here and uh, looking forward to the games. As we're saying, we're getting to the thick end now. This is where people are going to start to find out whether they're going through or going home. Let's take a look at the last four, though, just to bring you a bit of a recap here. And uh, again, some incredible results. The Punk Man one. Wow, that was... Uh, that's what FGC was all about right there. Mm -hmm. You saw Berlinio Momochi as well going at it. Momochi took that one. Infiltration beat Julio Fuentes. And Mon lost to Smug also. And this is the standings. You can see Ricky Ortiz down there on zero for five. Going to take a miracle. Julio Fuentes just above. And at the top, it's going to be Punk and Smug. And the next four coming up, these are the crucial ones. You can see Berlinio is going to be taking on Punk. Julio Fuentes is going to take on Momochi. Smug is going to take on Ricky Ortiz. And Infiltration is going to take on Marn. Now, let's talk about the next game. I'm going to start with you, Steve. Uh, Brolinio versus Punk. This is an interesting one, and I don't even know what I'm talking about. Exactly. See, that's the beauty of the FGC. We saw that interview earlier, mm. and we spoke to Punk earlier. And I, we asked, like, hey, who are you worried about? He's like, I'm not worried specifically about Brolinio as much as it is Nakali. Nikali is a, a very strong character, mm. especially he takes one instant and he can turn it into a round like that. Yeah, see, so you've got to bring you in here. Well, and you've got lots of stats and analysis there. I have there. books wow. and stats and numbers. I'm going to start calling you the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> All this points to Punk really on the verge of securing his spot in the next phase of the tournament. Mm. So he's sitting pretty at 4-1. Uh, we saw that he had complete dominance in the earlier brackets at South by Southwest. I expect that he's going to continue that here. Uh, it's just a matter of once he gets over that hump, what he's going to do. But he's going to have no trouble smooth sailing from on on him. Well, w why is that? Why is it going to be smooth sailing for Punk? I mean, are you feeling that as well? Well, I mean, the fact that he would be sitting pretty in basically the finals at that point, he would have go to the bracket because of how well he did here. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we saw what happened at South by Southwest. It could definitely go the same way. Who knows? But on the same note, we talked about Punk being one of the younger generational players. He said himself he had a little cobwebs, a little nerves, little butterflies in the stomach. So I feel like now he's going to correct that and make sure that when he moves on, that he's a lot more focused on those on that main bracket. So, Z, you think Punk's going to take this one? I got Punk, and he's not going to rest on his laurels. He's going to do his work in the preliminaries, and he's going to move on with that confidence. Steve, do you agree with that? I, I agree. I mean, I feel like Brolinho is definitely explosive Are enough to coming? change the outcome, but I honestly feel like, I mean, Punk is definitely on a roll right now, but Brolinho is definitely has the tools to slow him down. Well, we're going to see if you're right, because we're about to get into the game. Take it away, gentlemen. All right, here we go. Now, Nino let's see. On that, yeah, bubble, that 2-2, two -two, very precarious situation for him. He's going back to his... Nikali. Yeah, I would love to be um, I would love to be surprised by the outcome of this round. I mean, I feel like I'm going to be surprised regardless, but Punk has just been on a tear, if you will. Like, there's been so much that, so many chances for him to be stopped, and it just hasn't happened yet. Nice push to the corner. Wake up, EX. You need to do that. I, I feel like, especially in Street Fighter, a lot of people are afraid now because DPs aren't as strong, but that EX DP still has its power, and on top of that, you have to make him risk it. Another uh, statement, uh, DP, as if the first time was not enough. Sometimes a second. you gotta say it twice for mm. the people in the back. Didn't hear him <laughs> the first time. <laughs> and like I said, that first round goes to Brolinho. Okay. Round two. Fight. Yeah. Nice. Though, after that South by performance, stellar performance, and then petered out in the playoffs, 0-2 and two after a 7-0 and zero scintillating flawless performance. He was saying too, um, you know, he has a lot to learn from it, and I'm seeing a lot of the similar, uh, you know, performance here as well. Yeah, he's a... Uh... I'm looking at, like we said before, he did really well in that round robin section of the tournament. I mean, but he didn't run into Brolinho, and Brolinho... On the verge of stunning Karen, but nice. Nah, gonna get that stun bar down. Here comes Ooh, all that great damage taken happen. off. Mm. Dashes into the, to that crouch strong and gonna burn that critical art. Wow. Now that's what I like to see. He made sure that he played strong the entire time just to bring them back. Uh oh. Round two, two rounds apiece right now. 
Nice standing roundhouse. And now you see the respect set in. At first you saw Brolinho just dashing in, trying to find those hits. And now, just a little bit reserved. Well, obviously not, because he's still moving around like crazy, but... Yeah, you saw Punk trying to establish some Oki on Brolinho because he had been uh, woken up with that EX uppercut twice in a row prior. Didn't come that third time. And Punk just constantly getting hit by these V-Skill side smoles for Bolinho. Oh, nice active. Tries to get that command throw. Not today, says Punk. Backdashes and gets a nice punish. Oh, wow. That round was in fast forward. Get on his bus. You don't want to miss the next stop. Oh, wow. That was a quick match. Even with the, though it being a three-round count, it still was a pretty quick match. And you see Punk not face at all, chewing the gum, open mouth. That's a sign of relaxation. I, I feel like Bonino's command grab has been exposed for a couple of rounds now. Uh, he's missed the, the, the past few. It's not working out in his favor. Sometimes he's out of range. Sometimes it's just uh, a little too predictable mm. because a lot of uh, people have seen his sets already. Right. It's already in the midday. So it's not going to have that surprise factor. Yeah, and these guys are in the back watching all of these matches. So they're taking as much as, as many notes as we are. They're paying attention Ooh, to oh, no duck. The throw? Again? again? So much disrespect. He was definitely about to do it again. That was a don't, no bully, please, EX uppercut. Wow. He had to stop the cyberbullying sometimes and just put a stamp on it. Yes. Jab reset to the throw for the KO. And right now, it's not looking too good for Bolino. Quite. Nice spin set bar. I respect it. And goes for shoulder on wake up. I like it. That shoulder on wake up is uh, meaty, so not very punishable on the pawn block. Safe option if they uh, get up. Nice EX. Gonna get a nice little screen positioning right there. And you see Brolinho a little hesitant Ooh. to hit the uh, Get dunked. Nice. Stun bar looking pretty good right now. Nice reversal of his own. Punk trying to fight his way out of that corner. Oh, wow. Walked forward and got hit by that cross up. Ooh. Again, crowd strong. Oh, jumps into the corner, and you see Brolinho. Oh, that oh. surely was a mistake. Could have punished for the KO. Gets it anyway on the low medium. Right, gets that crowd strong. That's gonna keep him alive in this uh this match right here. This set, because uh, Monk is on set point. Nice crouching fierce man. And I love how he did nothing there, just waiting for the bait. Nice air -air with that target combo. Yeah, if you go for the target combo, you definitely had committed to it. That's a pure air to air, and that's what he was trying to bait and misses the combo by uh, several pixels. But he's still safe now as he stuns Bonino in the corner. And this is looking like a clinic for Punk right now. Dominating performance and already ready with the anti air. Oh, dash up, reset, forward throw. Oh, get Ooh. dunked. Uh -huh. Had to use the maximum range of that command throw to reach just in time. Oh, the empty, empty low, jump. low, but the no. Nerd, Josh? All right. No combo ender. What is that? A crush kind of combo. Simply would have taken it and a lapse in judgment from Bonino. The cause of his demise there. Punk moving on to zero as he clinches a spot in the next phase of the tournament at a pristine 5-1 record. Broninho falling to 2-3, and three, but still very impressive considering, you know, a lot of many players had uh, had them on his uh, their radar. Yeah, they weren't really, they really weren't worried about him, but he definitely left a trail of bodies. And like you said, with that, Punk solidifies himself for uh, semifinals right now. Yes, and if you... So what we're going to have now, we're mm -hmm. going to go to an interview with Punk on the stage. All right. Thank you, guys. So this morning, you said you wanted to be on TV. You wanted to play on TV. You did it, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling really good today, man. It's really good. Really good? So, so what was your biggest takeaway from, from the tournament today? Um, my biggest takeaway is that Bonchan noticed me today, you know? And that's your hero, right? That is my hero, you know? He... His girlfriend wrote me on, well, she mentioned me on Twitter saying, someone tell Punk that Bonchan nothing didn't Bonchan, you know, he wished me good luck. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I feel like that's, that's the alpha role, you know, playing a part that Bonchan's noticing me now. I'm like, yeah, now that he noticed me, it gives me the extra confident boost that I need to know that the best notice to another best, you know. 
I think it's kind of funny that that's your highlight, other than the fact that you're going to be on TV, playing on TV and whatnot. Uh, I have another question to ask you. So you and Marn, you had a very interesting little moment there at the end of that last match. Could you tell me a little bit about what you guys were trading chat on? Um, you know, it's Marn, so I had to I had to really show Marn who the alpha was. Because I don't want him to get too confident and think he's going to make it out today because he's not. You know, all the stuff he's talking about with Mochi, who's that, and he's going to win, he's not getting out of group stage, man. Marn, you you Marn, got to show him what it was. I had to show him that he's going to have to work a little harder if he thinks he's going to get out against me. Ooh. All right, all right. All right. Last question. What, what is next now that you've won? Uh, you going to go home, kind of uh, kick back a little bit? Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, hang, might just, like, try to print out a copy of that Bonchan tweet and just hang it up on my wall, you know? It's <laughs> a trophy right there, boy. That's better than winning Capcom Cup. All right, all right, man. Well, hey, congratulations on moving on. And, uh, ooh, you screwed up the handshake, man. You screwed it up, dude. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to send it back to the desk. Take it away, guys. So, a nice interview with Punk, the Alpha. The Alpha is actually super anime, super elated that Senpai finally noticed him. Bonchan giving that recognition to uh, Punk, who re regards Bonchan as one of the strongest players, especially after season two with that crazy nerf to Nash, but performing exceptionally well still. So we're going to have a anime wall scrub with that Bonchan tweet <laughs> over there. And of course, next up, we're going to have a juicy little team on team kill. It is going to be the Echo Fox Kens going at it in a civil war of the Kens. We're going to have that right after this break. Coming back.
All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm Richard Lewis. That's Tasty Steve. That's Z. We told you we were getting to the business end of things, and we certainly did. We had a wonderful uh, interview there with uh, Punk. But uh, just before we get into that, we're going to bring you the standings at home so you can see for yourself exactly what's going on and what's at stake. And there's confirmation. Punk there in gold. He secured a spot in the semis with five and one. Another strong showing for him. It's a uh, repeat of South uh, by Southwest. Uh, meanwhile, you can see there's other people with everything to play for. Not so much right down there, like we said, Ricky Ortiz probably needs a miracle uh, to stay in. But everyone else, it, it's wide, wide open. And that means we're now going into the Echo Fox Derby. It's going to be Julio Fuentes versus Momochi. I'll start with you this time, Z. Uh, tell me about this one, because you've been talking a lot about Momochi today. Same character totally different levels though you've got one person that only plays on a wednesday night fights versus someone that brings it every single day of the week this man is only a seventh of the ninja master himself i like momochi in dominating fashion i tell you he's, he's got a thing for this guy has he got a shrine somewhere uh, in the green room already? obviously because that's all he does is talk about momochi but however the last time you spoke about this the power of Momochi, he got kind of rolled up and tossed into the river, thrown away like the vagabond he's been playing a little <laughs> bit like today. I love Momochi, and I think he definitely can win this. However, I also feel like that Julio has definitely gathered those puzzle pieces to understand and get back to that point where he is one of the better Ken players. Well, see, you've got your library books all over there. So tell me what's <laughs> going to be key in this matchup. What, what should we be looking out for? How's Momochi going to get this victory? Well, the DNA results are in. It says that Momochi <laughs> Ken Tasty fathered, the father. fathered <laughs> Julio's Ken. Oh, right. <laughs> I like it. What about you, Steve? Final thoughts. This is going to be a tough one for Julio, but I do feel like Momochi might have the edge in this uh, one. You see, he's not happy about saying it. But I, don't, I didn't want to say it, but... Z's got a big smile on his face. Anyway, that means we've got to get into the game, and it's going to be the Echo Fox Derby. You take it away, boys. Now, what are we going to be looking at here in the difference of this Ken matchup? We've got two Ken Masters, but only one true master of the character. No, that's 100% true. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, Julio has, like, the best op chances in the world of winning this set. I will say, however, that he, he definitely can. Uh, it's it's going to come down to making the right moves, being able to put together the rest of that puzzle that I kind of feel like is lost in some of these matches that Julio's been playing. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Until someone, another Ken, can show me a one-hit, medium-hit, Critical art confirm. I, it's very difficult for me to look at another Ken in the same way that I absolutely adore what Momochi has done. This. <laughs> I love your word choice. No, I mean, I'm right there with you. Um, like I said before, I feel like there is a really large gap between Ken players um, just in the States in general and in looking at Momochi. Um, I feel like there's a lot less. Come table. on now, oh, look at this. I'm not going to. Oh man, wake up, tries to answer back, but it's not looking too well. And Momochi, look at that stun bar, lots of damage. Oh, nice jump out right there. You know what Senpai needs Ouch. to notice? Senpai needs to notice that he's already dead. <laughs> Stop up. it. Stop the cyberbullying. This is an absolute beatdown here from Momochi, exerting his dominance <laughs> over his teammate in Julio. Well, I guess at least they're on the same team. One, two, like I said, it's just one of those things where Julio is fresh off the bench, man. He's been, you know, in the cryo chamber waiting I to get, get back out here and play these games. And it's not going to be easy, but I still have faith in the guy. The That's young boy. why Momochi needs to remind him <laughs> who is the Alpha Ken. <laughs> All right, nice crowd. Between those two. All right, I'm, I'll, see, now I'm liking this new. I don't like that new. Nice throw, push to the corner again. Look at these it's an exotic frame kills here from Mochi. I like the patience right now. Julio looking like his old self with his patience. I like it. Go forward in the fireball again. Oh, nice counter. Not dead just yet. Suffocating pressure. This is just an exercise to build the meter before he takes this KO. Nice jab right there. No DP answer from Mochi. And Julio playing a very what? dangerous game. Nice anti air with the crouch draw. Didn't need to burn the meter. Forced Julio to. Depleting valuable resources going to a very critical 
final round, potential final round here. This is the Patton knee bash loops, but goes into the hell wheel to throw him out of the corner, does a short he can just to build a gauge. And gonna be able to take it with a ripe green banana. Wow. Come on now. Why are you smiling so hard, man? We gotta have faith. I thought the children were the future. You want this old ninja to win over the future? I ride that. <laughs> That, that, that health bar was green like the Yamano Tessen. That's what I ride. I'm riding on that Momoji train all the way. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to show you a few of these highlights. Um, like we said, I, I'm right there with you when it comes to Momoji. Momoji, definitely one of the premier Ken players in the country. And this wasn't going to be easy no matter who was playing Momoji. Like I said, Momoji definitely picking up steam throughout the day. Speaking of steam, gets the stun, gets a little more meter. Burns that last part of the bar. Game one, round two. And we see Julio trying to get something Look started. Look at these whiff punishes. Just right outside of the range of the crouching medium kick, which is the main footsie's tool of Ken. And then punished with that standing light kick buffered into that Shoryuken. I like the jump out right there. Nice jab. You see Momochi just not hit a button. Finds the crush counter, gets the stun. Nice neutral jump reset burns just to get the EX, and that's the first. That's still the match. Game two, round two. Nice push to the corner again, and once again, right in the same Throw position. Loops. Oh, Dizzy, this, is this a replay of the replay? <laughs> this is deja vu. Look at that. I would have stayed in rehab if I knew if I was going to come out and get this beating. <laughs> Back in the day, if you won a match mm -hmm. with a green bar, yep. you owed the other person a dollar. That's how it used to be. Oh, you see, you see, you didn't arcade know roots? Yeah, Come that's on how you got to do it. That's how we played. If you beat somebody with a green, mm -hmm. they better be back there exchanging money because that was a, definitely a green bar. All right, let's take a short little break. That was just too exhilarating of a beatdown. I need, I need rest. We'll be back.
All right, then. Well, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? I think I've had uh, sandwiches that lasted longer than I definitely have. Um, that was unbelievable. Just over. I barely had time to sit down. Barely had time to get another cup of tea. So uh, <laughs> what can you say about that one? I don't like the way Z is looking at me because he no, he's, this... he's, he's loving it. He's loving it, right? And you can see these are the updated standings, guys. Uh, Ricky Ortiz officially eliminated now uh, with that result. Uh, but that means that coming up, uh, there's a chance of a big victory here for Smug. Because if he's able to win against Ricky Ortiz, that would mean Smug is guaranteed at least a tie for second place. But Momochi, wow, just in and out. And uh, he's really knocking on that door, four and two as well. So a big game coming in. Guys, let's talk about this one. Obviously, uh, you've got to feel sorry for Ricky. She's had a real tough time of it uh, today. And, um, you know, going up against Smug, I've got to be honest, I don't think it's going to get any easier. Well, I think the, the thing is here that uh, there's a, the unique about this format is just the fact that Ricky could still make a difference in changing that oh, lineup absolutely. of what's about to happen. So that's what I really love about this format and how it uh, how it plays to the FGC of making people salty and having to hold it <laughs> until the next tournament. <laughs> so I am a fan of that. Like, But like you said, it is unfortunate that Ricky is out, but mm. she can still make a waves in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, that's the key thing. I, you got to play for pride and kind of focus on being a spoiler. You know, you got to ruin someone else's tournament. That's right. right? I predict actually a comeback from Ricky, at least in this match, because if you tally up the 0-7 result in South by, and the, now the 0 and 5, 0 and 12, and if you hit 13 losses in a row in the FGC, you become <laughs> meme status. She's going to do everything in her power to avoid that. I predict a first victory here for Ricky Ortiz. Okay, well, that's the prediction. Um, I know you're going the other way on this. Place. I'm definitely going to go the other way on this. All right, well, there you have it. So, look, the game's coming thick and fast. We're going to get into this one. You may take it away, gentlemen. All right, let's see how this turns out. Now, I would love, 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 mm -hmm. love for Ricky to definitely throw a cog in all of this. But I don't know how likely that is in this situation. I mean, Smug has been destroying all day, along with Punk, making some amazing strides, and I just don't see how that could change now. Nice. Oh, wow. Charge punch. Not sure what, he's looking, looking, what he was looking for right there. There we go. Nice dash punch again. I like That's that suffocating corner pressure that has been so good for Smug as he... Uppercuts Chun-Li out of the air, keeping her in this birdcage. No spinning bird can get out, okay, except for this slide activation. Nice EX legs right there, and I like the offense right here being displayed by Ricky. Nice defense as well. Get that confirmed. Props to Ricky. She is actually the last, you know, professional grade Chun-Li that is sticking with this character. A lot of other Chun-Li players have migrated away from this character. MLV is struggling, Human Bomb is struggling, Go Goichi is struggling. Uh, a lot of them are now studying yeah, pocket characters. Point. So too is Ricky, but really holding down the fort for this character, just out of love, really, yeah. for Chun-Li. I mean, the thing is about it, like, I'm, I'm a person of loyalty. Um, I, I really do like the fact that she's sticking with. I mean, on top of that, she said her other character wasn't ready, but even still, Smug's still playing proper respect. And, oh, wow. Uh, mm. That's gonna hurt. That's crazy Ouch. that Boxer doesn't even get to Dizzy because the opponent dies, dies before yeah. that. That's ridiculous. First game. Already made up and decided Smug. So it looks like Smug is not going to give any mercy to a fellow American. Wants to get that advantage, of course, over Momoji, who he's tied with in the current standings, 4-2 apiece. This is a very critical match for him. But perhaps sometimes more important than the score is walking away with your pride. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, and I feel like that's that's the switch up. I mean, a lot of people let pride take over when they play games like this. And especially in this situation where you're like, look, I just don't want to lose. I feel like this is the situation where you say, I got to make sure my pride is the most important thing. And I don't want to lose. Let go out with the zero, that big goose egg, as you would say. It's not yet. It's not over yet. Not over okay. yet. Nice. Ooh, nice block on the overhead jab. All right, now, set point right now for Smug. If Ricky really needs to make something happen, full critical art available, and you see Smug still not giving way and making sure that he plays proper respect so he won't get exposed. Nice find right there by Ricky. That's supposed to be an air leg. There's that EX Tatsu. Oh, right wow. through the Kikoken and got uh, for two.
Intuit is a back throw to put Chun Li against her back in the corner. And Gosh, just this giant sprite of Boxer in the corner has just been so difficult for everyone to escape without having half their life taken away. And right now, Ricky doing a great job. Okay. That there's a throw. All right. Has nice meter going into that last round. Critical art will be available for bo both our players. All right, let's see what happens. And, Ooh, oh, wow, nice. Crush that. So even if this smug uh, does win, he does have a slight advantage over Mochi, but Mochi does have another offer to tie it up. So it's very important as they go neck and neck just to get every lead that they possibly can. And that's the beauty, like I said, of this oh. format. Almost every game counts. Nice back. That could have been a lot worse. Nice back dash gets hit out of the air. That could have been a combo. Sometimes you sacrifice a little damage just to get out of a tricky situation. Stun bar. Nice this time. Okay. Oh, he's going to go for the overhead again. Opens up low. I would have did the overhead right there. Ooh. It's the first time in a long... Wow, Ooh. what a block by Smug. Oh, that might be done. Is this... Don't, don't tell me this is it. Uh. Come on now. Ugh. Gosh. Man, this character hurts. The raging buffalo himself? Let me check. Surely in season 2.1, something was done about this character, right? They would not let... The Hands of Justice would not let this character go unscathed by the nerf bat, I'm sure. The Hands of Justice, you mean Capcom? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, first off, he's a boxer. He's supposed to hurt that bad. Now, as far as, you know, killing people like that, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that one. But I, I know what I don't agree with. Smug being so mean. I just, man, that kid. It's a new age, man. It's no a new sympathy age. sympathy at all. So like we said before, that does not guarantee Smug no. anything. Um, Emoji still does have a chance. Um, our next match, I believe, coming up. I'm not sure. Let me double check. Infiltration versus Marn coming up next. And these matches are going to be great. But first off, we're going to have an interview. Let's take it. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I'm here with Smug. Five and two on the day. Uh, how are you feeling about your performance overall? I feel like I did better than I expected. Yeah. Were there any moments uh, throughout the day that you wish you can go and get back, uh, specifically that infiltration match? Uh, well, just well for the infiltration, I felt like I played a lot better than I expected. I, I didn't think I was going to win convincingly, but uh, the match that I would like to like probably replay is um, probably Momochi. I felt like I made a, a lot of mistakes that I feel like I, I would like to play again All right, cool. and try that again. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, your friend Punk. Your training partner, your lab mate, he's moved on. He secured his spot on TBS. How does it feel to see your friend, you know, up there and succeed in? It is really good because uh, I've known him for years before he even, like, started traveling. So it's really good to see somebody that you've known for years make it, you know, yeah, being right. successful. So. All right. uh, and also, where's the smuggery at? I've been missing some smuggery, and I, there hasn't been much smuggery today. Like, where's it been? I, I don't know, but I know that I was left hanging with a handshake from Marn. I didn't like that. All right. That hurt my feelings. All right. You hear that, Marn? You heard his feelings. All right, man. Well, you know what? Congratulations on the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you wash your hands, right? No boogers? No boogers? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. Just double checking. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to send it back to the desk. Take it away, guys. You know, Malik, this, this Malik guy, he's, he's learning quick in the FGC. He made sure he asked him, did he wash his hands? <laughs> I like that. I, I, I like you got to be honest. Slow-mo and drops it. Look at this. this. is like a combo reset. He's got more handshake mix-ups than Ibuki with the bomb and the drop and the dodge. What a disrespectful character in Marn. Well, next up, we have Infiltration versus Marn coming up. I can't wait for it. Stay tuned. More Street Fighter V action here at Elite.
the oh, mixer? Oh, 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 no. Well, it's all been happening today. All sorts of wild stuff going on. Nothing as wild as that interview by Malik there. That was, <laughs> that's, no buggers on your hands? Uh, uh, that's your, I know that's your first foray into, you know, our... Uh, yeah, rail, yeah, yeah. But you got to be weary of those things, man. These are some gross little uh, kids out here, man. I've been doing these sports for over 15 <laughs> years. I've I've had everything. I've had it all, right? So uh, anyway, let's take a look at the standings here, and you can see Ricky Ortiz zero and six, definitely out of the equation. Punk is already through, guaranteed a spot in the semis. Now it suddenly comes down to Smug and Momochi. But what's interesting here is we're about to see Infiltration play. He can't finish second, but like I said, he can spoil the tournament in a big way for Smug because if Infiltration wins his next two games, including a win over Momochi, sorry, he can be the deliverer for Smug. Smug would go through. If Momochi beats Infiltration, Momochi's through. Wow. So that's what's going this on. Infiltration is, is the gatekeeper, and he's going to be taking on Mon, the mean, moody man who doesn't like to shake hands. So, <laughs> guys, let's break this one down. <laughs> oh, there you go. Emotion. <laughs> he's, got, he's got such range, hasn't he? Uh, so let's, let's break this one down. I'll start with you, ZZ. You're, you're the one who's prepared. So, Infiltration had a sort of rocky start against that Broninho match. Mm. And then he sort of found his stride, whipped out that jury counterpick. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just not prepared for that character. That's true. And I feel like the deeper we go into to this day, the later the, the day gets, the more matches he under has under his belt. Infiltration is getting stronger and stronger. I like him in this matchup. Mm. I feel like uh, you're right. Infiltration has definitely been getting stronger and stronger every day. Um, well, every match. Um, I don't know how that's going to translate to Morin because Morin is kind of a wild card when it comes to mix up and like, you know, falling victim to those mental pressures. So I definitely feel like Morin could definitely still squeeze it out and, you know, kind of upset infiltration. Well, we'll see if you're right. Mon's, of course, still got it all to play for as well. I'll let you guys get into the action. Take it away, gentlemen. All right, here we go. Now, like we said before, Warren is definitely a wild card in this situation, Round but one. Infiltration getting stronger Fight. by the match, and I want to see exactly what changes he could make to pull this out. I mean, like I said, Warren not in the worst position, but still, you want to stay ahead of the curve, and Infiltration definitely could help out Momochi in a big way. Well, smug in a big way, I apologize. Oh, caught him with the overhead, got that additional hit on the ground, and it could have stunned Infiltration, but now finds himself grounded as the guard this incoming mix-up. Nice on the end jump low. Nice throw. And she has Ooh. crazy throw range only because of her walk speed. It just makes it look really weird. Good nice. jump out by Marn, though. Could have got perhaps a little more damage at the corner. Oh, crouch strong in the kunai. And that is the combo starter, the engine for everything which... Ibuki hinges on that low medium punch into that kunai. Oh, nice. Goes for the jump in. Gets that EX. Oh, like you throw. said, yeah, that range is deceivingly yeah. far compared to other characters. And it's, it's all because they're walking. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, but no, wake up. Morn has been known We've seen this that the entire day. Expect the cheeky setup. Nice. Yes, if I was infiltration, I would have sniffed that out. He was down on life. Morn had to go for something desperate. Yeah. Infiltration didn't want to deal with it. Ooh, what? I can't believe. Well, first off, that's the Come first on. time we've seen an extension yes. <laughs> to that mix-up. That was oh, really wow. sick. Fight. Unfortunately, it looked cool, but couldn't bring the V to him. Got a cross-up kunai, it seemed like, but not any combo extender as the kunai was a little too high. Hit Jerry on the head. Nothing to follow up on the ground. I like Warren not taking a step forward anymore. Sees that medium kick, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to stand it. Still tries to go in. DP from Infiltration, and now you see him just backing up. He charges up that V-Skill just a little bit. Ibuki does have trigger available. Four kunais in stock. She can do some damage. She can definitely turn this around. I don't think Infiltration has missed any of those. Wake up. Show you kids. Oh. Nice V-Reversal. Oh, overhead. Tries to go for the throw. That's not a hit, so of course it's going to cut right through. First game goes to Infiltration. 
And like you said before, he's definitely getting stronger. He's he's being he's playing a lot more confidently, as yeah. well as controlling that neutral standing medium kick, not letting him get anything Round started, one. even doing well enough to neutral jump or just walk past those kunais. <laughs> now right just him through it. <laughs> that wheel kick right through it this time. Martin almost looks confused as yeah. to what to do. He didn't have any snarky little expression on his face. Could he be finally stumped by this mystery character that Infiltration has busted out? Of course, if you were following his private stream on Twitch, you would know that he was getting married. You would know that he was what over it. Whoa, that was crazy! Right underneath that high vertical jump of Ibuki, did Jerry go? Hey, you see Martin just walk for it, gets that EX Kunai nice block by Infiltration. Ah, that's punished. Infiltration ready for any missed target blocked target combos. Oh, nice neutral jump gets that falling roundhouse activation. What's he gonna do? Ooh. What? Oh, reset. He, he does a Another reset one. every time and gets the stun. I counted like four riders in one combo. I don't know how that's possible. And oh, threw a wow. kunai just as a fake out? Again, infiltration is perfect on those guesses. To face the Fungsway oh. engine in and out. Good defense by Marn. Holding steady with the Naruto log. Oh. Look at this. Is this perfect defense? But oh. breaks right there and a lot of great damage. Evaporates just on that throw. Oh, the overhead again. That's the second round in a row that he's taken with an overhead. I feel like Marn was round taken two. by surprise by the length Four. and reach of that overhead. Especially in the corner. Didn't have any real estate to back up. He did right at the tip. Nice. You see that jump back just to get out of range of that kunai. Stocks up. Nice block this time around. And Morn's defense not bad. It just seems like you can only go for so long before you, you know, fall victim. Nice. There's another EX kunai again. Gets the throw. On that standing medium kick from Obuki. How many times have we seen infiltration in the history of Ouch. the SGC? Once he finds a character that he can play keep away with, it's just so hard to chase him down and look at that. Even Marn, the secret weapon all the way from Vietnam, unable to find any hole in the defense. And infiltration like the businessman he is, is quickly puts back on the hoodie and just like, I'm back Storms out Storms out, yeah. Going back to the waiting room with that sick E-League hat on. You said yourself that Infiltration definitely has been getting stronger each time. And on top of that, the fact that he's using um, Jury is one of the curve, the many curveballs that he has he has up his sleeve. And that's looking really good for Momochi at that point. A lot of people that uh, did not get that season pass just are, are simply on I wonder if Marn even bought it. He's yeah, like, should I, I get a couple noodles or should I buy Jury, the character? And I bet he opted for the, the couple noodles. All right, here we go. Once again, every time we see that was that so was, sick. That though. was so sick. If you get artistic points for that, yeah. Warren. Gets an A for effort. I like it. And I just feel like, he, wow, that was crazy. I can honestly say I had never seen that before. Nice. Oh, I like that neutral jump. jump. Yeah, I believe Infiltration has stuck something out to. That, that, that was, was such a reset. Oh my god, that was so <laughs> good. And then the fake out. I love how he threw the kunai sort of as a waste. Probably wanted him to freeze up a little bit, possibly get a throw. And what That's a such a modern thing jump. to do, though. Yeah, yeah, just not optimal. Look at the damage here. Ugh. And very difficult for Marn to get anything as he's sort of just desperate to get any sort of offense started. And I really think one day maybe Marn was hungry, bon me or buy jury the DLC and picked the wrong choice, and it served to bite him here in the E-League Street Fighter Invitational. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a lot that could that you can take away from that last set. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that we saw Marn pull out so much tech with Ibuki. Like you said, these are setups, and you, one of your best friends, Shin, plays Ibuki, and you're like, I've never seen that before. And that says a lot to me. It shows a lot to the mind that Marn has on his side. The two do share tech with, a lot, with each other. So I like that. It's going to be an Ibuki coalition going up against the army of those other characters. It's definitely going to work out in his favor. Of course, next up, we do have F Julio Fuentes versus Brolinho coming up. Stay tuned. Like I said, more Street Fighter V action on the way.